Good evening, friends and visitors to Albania. We welcome you back once again to our Ora News broadcast. It is now time for our English Flash News edition, in which we present to you the Albanian news in English, six days a week at 6 p.m. As usual, I'm Daniel Cook, your host. And in today's news, it seems that the Prime Minister's trip to Brussels, as well as Lulzim Basha's trip to Berlin, have had the effect of bringing the opposition closer to rejoining Parliament. After they returned to Albania, representatives from both parties started a process of negotiation with the involvement and guidance of the European Parliament. The Socialist Party has confirmed the appointment of a German Social Democrat who will serve as the intermediary in this process. Mr. Knut Fleckenstein will mediate the majority's negotiations with the right side coalition and attempt to give things peaceful, uh, to keep things peaceful and progressive. Ora News sources have stated that the Democratic Party is also trying to find a mediator. And most probably, they will appoint Mr. Edouard Kukan to take up this important role. The European Parliament has already expressed the need for a new law to govern crime in Parliament. And they feel that it must be a law which is approved with consensus from both parties. They think that it must be done within January of 2015. The mandates of the opposition deputies are going to be voided if they do not take up their positions in Parliament by January the 12th. The appeals made by the President of the European Parliament, as well as the discussions of the Leader of the Opposition with the German officials, just may solve the situation before that deadline approaches. The Minister of State for Relations with the Parliament was invited last night to speak on the show tonight, Il Vatare, here on Oran News. She said that there are no more reasons for the opposition to stay away from the parliament, since the majority has fulfilled every request that has been asked of them. According to the minister, the opposition's boycott is causing damage not only to the parliament, but also to the opposition itself. While speaking about the recent decree of the president, in which he made his appointment for the governor of the central bank, she said that the parliamentary groups of the Socialist Party and the Democratic Party will, pre will present their opinion on the matter in the next few days. She also quoted one of the laws of the Constitution, making the following statement. The decree of the President must be consulted with the Parliament. The Constitution also talks about something else, the fact that the Governor must be part of the Supervisory Council of the Central Bank. This candidacy does not honor the law, and we are running out of time to choose a new governor. We must wait for the decision that will be made, stated the Minister of State for Relations with the Parliament. A political forum was held today in order to discuss the problem of corruption in Albanian politics. At this meeting, the government of Albania expressed many of its ideas for dealing with this issue. For nearly four hours, in fact, the Albanian government officials spoke about their ideas for the fight against corruption. However, the ambassador of the OSCE, who was also present at this activity, made the statement that the government must move from mere words to concrete actions. According to the Albanian prime minister, the fight against corruption is not merely throwing vain words around, but it is an operation that is necessary in order to modernize the country and the entire governmental system. He said, this forum is not just a parade of successes, but it is something that we owe to the Albanian people. We must increase our transparency regarding what we have done and what we need to do. A year ago, we committed to improving things. And today we are here to compare the situation and underline the fact that we are still far away from our objectives. Every government has a purpose. We want to be remembered as the government that modernized the country. Our focus is the modernization of the governmental system. Look at what is happening now in the electrical sector. Imagine the difference if these people had paid their bills years ago, stated the Prime Minister of Albania. A few minutes after these statements, the head of the opposition responded on Facebook, saying that this prime minister and the ministers of the cabinet 
are icons of corruption. The head of the Democratic Party wrote, Is it possible for the icons of national corruption to lead the fight against corruption? This is a cause against crime being led by those who brought crime to the country. The Albanian ombudsman has requested an explanation of why 131 prison employees have been released from their duties. Just a few days after 131 prison guards were fired for not paying their electricity bills for 13 years, the Albanian ombudsman has requested explanations from the general director of prisons, as well as the Ministry of Justice. Through an official request, the institution of the ombudsman has asked for the reasons that led to the discharge of 131 employees of the prison system. These 131 employees were only those who had the biggest electricity debts. The ombudsman requested detailed information from both of these institutions regarding the number of employees that were discharged in this matter, the motivation behind this issue, and the legal basis of this decision. The ombudsman also requested copies of the documentation that proved the allegations against these 131 former employees. A few days ago, verifications made by the prison directorate showed that nearly 650 employees have not paid their electricity bills on a regular basis. In order to ensure that state employees are following the law, the Directory of Prisons ordered the firing of 131 prison guards who had the highest debts to the electrical distributor. Today, the Institute of Statistics published the newest data on the unemployment situation in the country of Albania. The most recent numbers show that during the third quarter, the number of unemployed people from 15 to 64 years old is approximately 1.4 million. However, there are still 220,000 unemployed people in this age group. According to the Institute of Statistics, 32.4% of young people from 15 to 29 years old are unemployed. It has been released that the official rate of unemployment in Albania is 17.4%. The Institute of Statistics stated that compared to only one year ago, the un unemployment rate has increased by 3.7 percent. I'm sorry, the employment rate has increased by 3.7 percent. And that employment has increased by 1.8 percent since only the last quarter. On the other hand, the National Unemployment Office has been overcrowded with people who are jobless and cannot pay their bills. The cameras of Aura News show that nearly 200 people were waiting for many hours at the unemployment office just to receive the documentation of unemployment. It is difficult to believe it, but the images that follow are not images from a third world country, from a third world African village. In fact, they are images from the coastal city of Vlora. Twenty years ago, the municipality of Vlora chose this place as a temporary residence for 90 families. Now, 20 years later, this place has turned into a permanent residence for families in need. These unfortunate families face many daily problems, but now they are dealing with a complete lack of electricity. Knock on any door in the area and you will now see a, a new story of pain and suffering. The people in this area are living in extreme poverty. The residents here are mostly orphans and disabled people. Most of the inhabitants of this area are only children, and now they are living without electricity or heat in the middle of winter. Poverty rules the lives of these children, who instead of playing with toys and spending time with their friends as other children do, are experiencing the harshness of winter and the lack of food. This neighborhood looks like it belongs in a third world country. Six months after the murder of the banker Artan Santo, the police still have no clues that lead them to the perpetrator of this crime. This incident was discussed in a meeting that was organized between the state police and the prosecution of Tirana. 
After the meeting, the general director of the police of Tirana refused to give any details about the case. However, he did confirm that the investigations are continuing. Artan Santo was assassinated in June of this year. He was killed at about 9.15 a.m. in Tirana, just after leaving his vehicle. He was shot six times and unfortunately died in front of the bank that he led for many years. The convicted women from the women's prison have put together an exhibition in honor of the National Day of Human Rights. This exhibition was filled with pieces that were made by the convicted women, and they stated that these pieces are mostly made by hand, and each one of them requires at least a few days to complete. They also added that all of the materials were provided at their own expense. The exhibition was visited by the general director of prisons, who expressed appreciation for the work that was done and presented a new project for the employment of convicted women. This has been the English Flash News Edition. Thank you for watching. Please join us again tomorrow at 6 p.m. for more Albanian news in English right here on OR News. Thank you and good night.